Hello, today we are going to talk about the transformations part. Um, we first today cover the uh, basic level of transformations and then um, in the next sessions we go a little deep into the transformations and how we could play around with the transformations, how the transformations are important or how we could change the or create the new RDDs transform the um, data and apply the minimal aggregations. We see all these things today. For that reason, what we, as I specified, the transformations or aggregations we can develop in the local development environment using Eclipse. And once the development is ready and you generate your program into jar file, and submit it to the cluster. So for today, what we see is how to create the program, how to create, how to get the data from a local machine or from HDFS and up and create the RDDs, instantiate the Spark application and create the transformations and see the output. And this is my Eclipse IDE and uh, over here I created my project and this is my package under the sample package I create one Scala object and I put this one I name it as transformation and here I write the program okay so first what I do is to execute some of the samples I mean just to say the development environment is in your local machine that means you do not have access to the cluster you can't you you are not testing I mean you need to test the development code in your local machine and once it works fine and then you would be able to move it to the production environment or development environment which runs on the cluster so what we do first of all to test your application you right click on your package and you click on Scala create Scala interpreter in Scala program research So you normally see it as Scala interpreter. Okay, create Scala interpreter. So you just click on this one and you come across the Scala console. If your IDE downloaded Scala um, packages, Scala jar files, and you would be able to see this, right? So the use of this Scala interpreter or Scala console is when you develop a program you can test your each and every line if it's working or not and if any errors you could spot on that's the only reason now what do we do here is the scenario first I'm going to try out is map transformation let me open the helper documentation I click on transformations over here on the transformations so these are the list of frequently used transformation we may not be able to cover each and every bit of it but I try to cover the maximum possible one and which are further frequently more frequently used thing so the first one what, what I'm going to cover is the map function so what is map whatever you see here is they are RDDs these RDDs are created by your spark application so simply ma map is a function 
which is which can create a new RDD. So what is an RDD? It picks up the data type and create the new data type or new data sets from one set to another set and it applies the required data transformation the way you want it. It applies those changes into your data sets and create the new data set. So let's quickly have a look and just to let you know map is one of the most most frequently used transformation. Perhaps without this, you won't be able to do anything, right? So now what I do is first, this is my Scala object and just let, and also I'm writing this transformations in Scala programming. You do the same programming using Java, Python, R and Scala as well. And I chose to go with Scala, right? So what I do here is, and I'm creating a main method here. This is my driver program. And this is my driver program. And always keep open your packages here because you need to access the functions. So what I first need is I need to instantiate the spark application okay so before I instantiate let's let's go through this way i have got some test data let me open the test data over here this is my test data sales order one sales order another I mean just to I created three, three sets of sales order document and I would like to play around with these two for now and I open the sales order I just want to show you it has got the sales order list it's a sales order ID sales order date and sales order amount and status of the sales order okay this is the sales order list of content I have got. I have got about um, I think about 30 to 40 lines of uh, sales order data I have got. In reality you get millions and billions of rows like this but I just want to show you an example purpose so that's why I have got a very small snippet of the sales order content. So here what I did what I want to do is I have got the sales sample sales orders content which is in the simple text file the business use case is this my customer gives me the sales order data in a text file using spark application I need to load that data create RDDs and transform or structure the data from text file into a structured data transform it and I either store the result in a text format or I can load it to the Oracle application, database application. Here we have our environment development do not have an access to the Oracle applications or MySQL. But to precisely, to make the journey simple, I would like to chop down the scenario or use case like this. Customer gives me the text file and I structure I load the data and make it structured and then apply the transformations I needed and I store the result back to the database or back to the local machine. That's what the use case is. You work with the same similar fashion in the real time as well. And just to let you know one of the scenario how often it works is when the sales orders not necessarily sales or customer interaction financial data or warehouse data or whatever it is all this information stores in the Oracle system or their own databases not necessarily Oracle could be any database using our spark application what we supposed to do is we need to fetch the data from their HDFS, I mean their database application, load into our HDFS, 
HDFS becomes our file system. Spark cannot run alone without file system. It could be HDFS. It could be local file system also. Doesn't matter. It could be Amazon or it could be Azure Cloud. Whatever it is, or Google Cloud. It should have to have local. It should have to have file system. Without the file system, Spark cannot run. Just remember the thumb rule. So the data load from from the Oracle app uh, or their databases into the our file system, whichever designated, and Spark picks up the data from the HDFS, apply the transformations, create new RDDs, and generate the results you wanted. Two options here. Either store the result back into HDFS for another designated location or load the results into a database. It can be again your Hive, Cassandra, MongoDB, MySQL, Oracle, anything your choice or even a HDFS location also. And from there, either their applications, for example, BI systems, more frequent, Tableau, SAS, Microsoft Power BI, those systems picks up the data and displays the dashboard. Okay, so this is how the real-time process works. Okay, so let me work on this sample order data. Now we if I open it again, and this is the list of data I have got, okay? So what happens if I work on map? I'll tell you first. Map usually get this data, sales order copy, creates RDD. RDD in the sense, in this RDD copy, it, cre it, it consider each and every line as an array of element, okay? So it pick up the copy of data and it understand, okay, this is a simple content. Now what I need to do is, and I have, I, I map notices a list of lines of data. Each line is considered as an array. It split the whole content into number of lines and create arrays of array, multi-dimensional array it creates. Okay, so if you have got 10 lines of, if you have got 10 rows of data and it creates 10 rows of arrays or 10 arrays of array, one array consisting of 10 lines, one array consisting of 10 arrays because you have got 10 rows of data. Let's have a look. Right, first what I need to know is I need to load the data. Loading the data is fine, but if you just load the data, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, what that means to say is, I created val, let's say, already ordered, and I just want to load the data. See, loading the data here is not the job here. Loading the data into the Spark application is the task. When the Spark get the data, then only these transformations, aggregations happens. Otherwise, there is no point of loading the data into your code, right? So what I simply do is, first I need to instantiate my Spark application. All my aggregations, transformations should be done by the Spark application. And therefore, I need to start my Spark application. To do that, what I need to do is, first I need to do two things. One, I need to provide the configuration details of the Spark application, and then I can start the application. For that reason, I'll open the uh, your transformations packages here, and Apache, Arg Apache Spark. If you click over here, and these are the list of classes you have got. In this class, you come across two classes. One is Spark Con, Spark Context. So these are the two classes are required to 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 configure the Spark Con is to configure your Spark application. Spark Context is to instantiate. That means you are 
your this is an entry point this is you are creating the spark application you are starting the engine you are starting the spark engine so that is what you need to do so first we need to create the spark configuration don't get confused how do i know it because i'm working on it therefore i know how to do it but don't get confused why we need to create the spark on why we need to create the spark context just make some research on it and the journey becomes so easy it's not that complicated right now to work with this thing i need to download the i know i need to import this package import and i need to work with the spark con copy it dot com that's it now my eclipse can access these classes class methods so right so i have downloaded i have imported the spark config now i need to instantiate the spark conf and i see these are the two using these two methods instance uh, constructors i need to instantiate it so i chose this one spark conf right so this is how you create the spark conf and you need to provide extra information additional details about the configuration and these are the list of methods you have got and you play around with them and out of which the important thing what i need to provide is set master is one thing one of the required one the set master is basically if you look into the description over here this is the cluster master so what cluster master you are working with you need to provide that information the cluster masters are your local machine normally you provide the local that means if you are working on the development environment your local machine in that case you provide the local like this and if you provide local number four that means you are working with depends on how many cores your laptop or your desktop is and based on that you specify the number of cores but not necessarily you need to specify the numbers you can give three cores it depends on the hardware configuration so each core is considered as one partition spark internally logically it do, it identifies the number of cores of your laptop and i and picks up the cores out of your hard drive i mean out of your ram and starts executing it so if you don't specify how many number of cores your spark wants to work uh, should work with then spark automatically chooses to go how many cores are available and how many are free and how many it can use it so there is no specific that you need to specify the number of cores this digit is number of cores this is for local and whereas if if you are working in the real time environment and you have to move the code to the product move the code to the development uat or production if you are working with the yarn cluster master and provide the spark cluster url the master or else you provide the standalone so i mean sorry if you run on the standalone and you provide the standalone uh, host address otherwise you provide the master you are uh, yarn or mesos url so that's how it works so let me go with the set master put dot either i can paste it or else i can choose set master you press on it and i'm working on local and what other things i need to know i need to give the application name set app name okay give this one set app name is just the name of your application nothing to do with it with it just the naming convention i say set set app name you can give any name right so these are the at least these two are required 
parameters to be provided but you play around with it what else you could do what other things you can add set is set means setting the data into the spark application and get means get the data or spark application returns when the spark config is executed so you play around with it if you want okay so this is a spark conf and then what I need to do is I need to create the spark context right so copy import and I need to work with the spark context if I don't provide this import path I won't be able to access this one let's give a shot and see you see here spark conf is an error saying that no spark conf is found so that's the reason why we need to import the package if you are from development environment you understand it very well if the people who are not from development environment then this is to remind them the need of this import and secondly if you observe here the spark conf and spark context both are from one package one single package this package have got all these data therefore what you could do is you have got two ways to do it one you explicitly specify the whole path or else until here the package is same and these are the classes so what you could do is you put a curly braces like this after the dot and what you can do is you take this copy it and comma and put it over here and that will do because until here this is one package and these are the two classes in a package so if you follow this method you could specify one single row with multiple classes so your code looks clean and readability improves because it has got very less number of lines right now let's go with the context I gave SC as a spark context and I would recommend you to use the SC than to give any other name conf SC especially for spark configuration spark context I advise you to use these two configuration okay you use these two variables if possible right and then what do you need to do is in the spark context if you look how to instantiate the spark context three ways so new spark context provide the data I mean provide the parameter values spark context with master and app name spark context just with the spark context so these are the four or four ways you could have it you play around with it what happens if you use this if you use this if you use this but I'd like to go with the simple thing that is this one okay because I already have a configuration details and I would like to provide the spark context new spark context and give this value you are sending the configuration details to the spark otherwise spark engine do not understand okay these are the configuration details I'm saying look I'm the spark configuration data and uh, asking the cluster asking the spark to run on my local machine and set my application is this thing and provide the data into the spark context then spark engine understand okay I was asked to get the I was asked to set these details and work on local machine so that is what it simply means that's it the spark engine is ready now what I do is I run this application in locally just to say how it is working or whether it is running or not so I copy this import and over here in the spark console this is in the Scala console you enter this one and the result is import is done you need you are manually executing it and see and if the code is running or not and copy the line and see the configuration details are generated now you see the la this line when you give the data like this and the spark engine now gets started you see the spark engine is starting now right it started okay so running the spark engine our spark version is so and so 
and check the default details. This is the configuration details of your cluster or your application where the Spark is ho hosted and the default property values are picked up over here. Default properties to run a Spark, Spark engine is already configured by default and those property details are overridden by the parameters that you specify in your program or driver application and go through all these things and um, understand try to understand what is it all about okay so which is quite interesting and this is the started this you know this is a url where your spark can be accessed spark url so spark your bond let's see if it's working or not see this is the spark job and this is my user you see this is how you could see the the spark how it is working and the status of the working and the local host and these are the block manager resistor block manager so all these things okay which is quite interesting Right, so what we do now, and I have created the Spark cluster now, Spark engine I have instantiated. Now whatever we create the data, we load it into the Spark engine. And that is where the whole concept of this big data Spark comes into the picture. Now, what I need to do, the requirement is, I need to load the Spark order, I mean order data into the Spark engine. Now let's say val ORD equal to now everything to be sent to the Spark engine. I use this SC. Now let's see. SC is nothing but your Spark context, right? SC is nothing but your Spark context. This is a Spark context. In development or in real time, as a developer, I do not refer each and every line with the help document because I know what to use it and this in this video each and every line I'm taking you through the help document the package therefore that makes you that makes your learning easy why this guy is using this line where these lines are getting from and for example if I do not show this package details you don't understand how I got this line and why I have to provide these details that you do not know so therefore, though it is some extra time, I'm trying to correlate each and every line where I'm getting from. That makes your journey, learning journey, so fast and enjoyable. Right. So in the Spark context, now this SE is a Spark context. So in this Spark context and the list of methods I have got, right? So I'm going to play around most of my program with this Spark context thing. Okay. So now what I do is, now with this Spark context, I need to I need to load the data, right? This is the data that I need to load. Okay, where is this? And this one, let's see if I have got something that I can load the text file into the Spark context. Let's see, load the data search with this, with this C C D G H I K L M N P P R S T text data kind of a thing. Texting, you see, is it something? Well, look here, text file. Oh, got it. Read the description. Read a text file from HDFS, a local file system, or any other Hadoop supported file system, and return it as an RDD string. Okay, so that means it can, this function or a method can load the data, can read the data from your HDFS or any other file system or HDFS kind of a file system and create an RDD, create a new RDD. Resilient distributed data set can be created based on your file system, right? This seems to be a better fit for us. Now what we do is simply SC dot you either copy it paste it or not necessarily you need to copy paste it What you simply do is you know this name, right? So just put SC dot T you see text file. Okay, you press enter. That's it. Okay, the path path is the location of the file name and how many partitions you want to create it. You not necessarily specify explicitly the Spark application choices on its own. 
and give the double quotes. In the double quotes, you provide this data. And this is my path. I'm running on my local machine. First of all, there is two things that I would like to specify. Okay. Now this is the file. Okay, text file. Whatever the file, text file or you know XCSV, whatever it is. I need to specify the prerequisite as file. Prerequisite as a file and then path of the file. This is what you need to provide. If it is a local machine, what if if it is a HDFS? Then let's say in our Cloudera. Then what we do is we provide just a second. Okay. So what if if it is a local machine you specified file with the prerequisite and path of it, and what if if it is an HDF a HDFS file system? Then you need to provide HDFS. In a path, let's let's do this way. Val, ORD. You can give any name, Rick. ORD. Yes, see dot. Text file, and just an example. And here, HDFS path, and you give your cluster. And for as it's a. Uh, and I got this path specify this one HDFS quick start Cloudera is your application ID, application um, IP address or URL prerequisite is HDFS prefix HDFS.Cloudera is your IP address or your host name 8020 is your port name and this is your path of your HDFS and this is how you need to provide the data. This is how you need to provide the data. Right? So this is how logically you need to follow if you are working with HDFS. Right. For me, it's a local machine here. So now an RDD get created automatically. Let's see. If I see, if I copy, paste it. Yeah, successfully an RDD is created. You see here Spark RDD. Okay, just to let you know, we are testing this. If our code is running or not, if it is valid or not, we are just testing it in our console. Okay, but it's actually not running. I mean, it's running application in your local machine, but we are evaluating your code. Okay, but let you know, if you don't paste it over here, and if you go through it, remember it actually not loaded anything. Okay, anyway, I'll cover this point in later stages. Right. So now I have loaded the data and create an RDD. Now what I supposed to do is let's have a look. So in this text file, I need to create, I mean the, the data is created. Now I need to apply some map function and see how it works. Okay, how the map get created. Okay, now let's see. Well, ORD underscore map, give any name, just a, a value name or a variable value name is this thing. And from this ORD dot map, choose the map. So this is one transformation. What map is actually you need to input a function. Map is a transformation and it's, this expects F. F is nothing but a function. You need to give some function. Function consisting of a behavior. Okay. So map says, okay, mate, give me the function so that I apply the function on this RDD and get you the result. So the function, what it's supposed to do is up to you. Do you want to delete something, add something, the transformation, how you want to transform it, that you need to specify in that function. That behavior, you need to give it inside the map and then that behavior is applied by the map. So a simple thing what it is, I give a simple anonymous function. I give some name. Let's say I give an anonymous name is R, not necessarily R, you could put any name as you wish. Now what I want, okay, I give, now what I say is, the behavior what I want to say is, uh, look map, 
you this is the order id and this is the order date this is the order amount and this is the order status now split each and every comma wherever you notice the comma split and create as an index 0 1 2 3 this is what i want to do it okay now what just apply this behavior on each and every line and show me the result that is what i'm saying okay let's say now what i say is r dot what i need to do is i need to create index for index at every comma separation so what i do is r dot split where should i split at the comma and should give the index for it and i index this one as zero okay comma That's it. That's it. I split it and created index. And what I want is, and I just want to show, I, I just want to see order ID and order date and the status. I just want to see okay I instead of four lines I mean four zero one two three I just want to see order ID uh, order date and the status zero one and three and ask them and this is the transformation okay and then what I say is in the map function it just applied the thing and then and put another map saying that take the first one comma second line and fourth it's a tuple actually underscore stands for tuple okay this is what the behavior i specified i have applied two maps the first map is splitting the rows into a sensible index format separate the comma and eat every comma create an index zero one two three and then the second map function just pick up first second and fourth index and ignore the id ignore the amount of rdd uh, amount of order that is what i said right so actually let's see if it really works or not it seems to be working so it is a valid code line so right this is how it works and finally i want to see the result well, ORD res and take the previous RDD and this is RDD, this is an RDD, this is an RDD and this is also an RDD. So Spark creates RDD. So this is what we are working on. ORD map dot, what we need to do is we need to see the data. See the data and since I need to get the result. So now I need to go and check what actions we have got. Look mate, in this transformations we applied the map. And remember actually two, two transformations we did it. One is the first one, load the Spark date, load the file into the Spark and apply the mapping transformation. These are the two steps we have done. But actually in the reality, 
Spark didn't do anything. It just noted down the steps to be done. Noted down the steps when when we ran the actually. Okay. I want. I first see collect the data. This is one of the action I have got. Unless the collect action is triggered, previous two lines won't get triggered. It is just a lazy evaluation in the runtime. So if I use collect, what happens? Returns all the elements in the data set as an array of a driver program. Okay, so let's see dot. Now I see collect. Okay, this is an action. And this is transformation. Okay, if you observe here, this is a simple text file, and I applied the text file. What is the transformation? The transformation is take the simple text file and split it into comma, give them index. That means the text file which has got no logical navigation or logical, you know, uh, capability, we created the text file into a more sensible structured format using this and then we picked up the fields or columns what we wanted or by index so and next one we are putting it a more meaningful structured way so that is what the transformation is and finally collect is the action and remember as the thumb rule when I run this spark application the code runs from beginning okay importing okay and instantiate the spark configuration and create the spark application and then you know text file so and so is the path and apply this map transformation and this is the collect oh you want the collect and then from here from here until here in the runtime in the runtime when i run the application until here it is just a sequential steps the spark application write down on its memory okay i need to perform these these these, these steps and that is what it do it does unless until it identifies the action of a collect it doesn't do anything when it notices the collect and then it starts executing one after another and that is called the lazy evaluation okay so now let's see what what happens okay there is some error Uh -huh. actually this is an error array index outbound exception that means array starts with zero right zero one two three right instead i use one two four if i choose one two that's fine there is no four so therefore that's an error so i gave a wrong index id Hopefully it should work now. No? Oh, no, 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 no. That's not the one. Okay. So, I have given the full path and I in the map transformation I applied the each index into the dot two ID dot two int means the first line transformed considered as integer and the second one is a date I took it as string and this is the integer and this is a string the first one is integer the second one is string the third one is integer and the fourth one is string and this is what I did it and then next one val ord underscore okay so i need val dot map or maybe i can write in a single line either you specify as a dot or else you can write ord underscore 
fields equal to and this is the first one dot again map take one anonymous function I see rr dot Okay, so okay, fine. Let's what what we can do. Is let's simply show one data. First, we'll see the result and uh, see what it happens. Collect equal to. I just want to trigger the action. Body dot. dot collect this is an action okay now let's see what will happen Still error. So what we have done is a minor issue actually. So over here I added accidentally added one more closing bracket. That is where the issue. So now it's sorted out. Okay. So the map I just uh, loaded the text file and created the integer string integer and string format. Now what I need is I first need to pick up only the one, two, one, two, and a fourth column from my order. First one, second one, fourth tuple. For actually we call them as a tuple okay and the next step is collect okay next step is a collect this is an action let's see how it's gonna work Right, the final result is this. Now I'll show you in a text, in a notepad, how the result, map result looks like. And this is the result as an array. Result is an array with the integer string and string format. 
because I asked it to display it in three display three uh, tuple three columns first second and fourth that's the reason why it's a three integer string string format and it is in the it is result is returned in array of the list of tuples if we don't specify at the last one okay let's say if I comment this one and run the result let's say okay I just removed this tuple and I want to uh, return all the four columns and then what happens let's see this is the result I have got okay so if you notice here this is a result of integer string integer string format and result is in array of tuple okay so this is what because we specified it to be splitted and created as an integer string what if if I don't mention this one and simply says ORD dot let's say dot whatever the action over here okay if I specify here dot collect if I say this one what happens let's see and there is no it's everything is considered as a string and created an array with complete list of arrays okay so this is how the result is returned now let's go back and put the code as it is okay example purposes I chose to go with I chose to display only one two and four but we need all the four and the result is this okay now this is what the map is all about okay let's take a flat map what happens flat map the next option is flat map flat map is whereas map takes each and every line as one single array okay each and every line as considered as array or one collection but if I use a flat map another transformation entire node entire text file is considered as one single collection okay let's have a look and here if I comment is not required val ord underscore f map flat map I'm trying to trans transform it and I take this ord okay for easy understanding or it dot flat map okay and I specify this anonymous function okay so I just created a flat map with the split and the collect I didn't apply any too much of a transformations 
I simply just want to show you how the flat map works. It collect entire file and generate one single collection of records. This is how it works. If you see here, everything is considered as a string and an array consisting of a complete list of complete list of records into one single file. Okay, it doesn't consider it as each and every line, it considers whole line, a whole list of rows as collection. So this is the difference between standard map and flat map. Okay, but quite often we use map. Of course, it doesn't mean that we don't use flat map. Oftenly we use to map for extensive transformations. Okay, that's it. And uh, let's quickly run through some of the other examples. Uh, it won't take much time. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to show you one more thing as a filter. So what it means to say is in this record I have got list of orders which are different statuses closed, pending payment, complete, closed, complete, processing. I just want to see list of orders which are complete in status. Let's play around with it. And this is a source and this is a thing. Okay, fine. Next RDD, val ORD. ORD underscore. Filter equal to ORD map dot filter okay and this is here we need to pass a function what is a function let's say or else we could pass over here as well instead of writing one more rdd filter pass function it is not visible Okay, so what I did was I just applied a filter on tuple 4 or column 4 equals to complete and let's see what happens. Right, this is the result, we got it. The format is interstring, interstring. And if you say array of all the completed list of orders, we get it. 
you see all the status are complete 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 so this is how you could perform the filter transformation and union intersection distinct quickly i'll take you through <laughs> 